Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Hey. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking win. Ow. Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course. Joe Boo is holding down the fort at the Red Brick House, but Joe Bear is here taking care of business. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up football gods. Uh, program note, um, I've got to get back down to the Red Brick House. I've got to help some friends move this morning and then get down there. So we may be late. We may be doing the um, uh, members chat at 6 o'clock this evening, but I'll let you guys know how the day goes um, if it's going to be on time i'll let you know in the community tab and so or in a video so <clears throat> there's that yesterday we had our final preseason game of the year and um, the next time the dallas cowboys take the field dak prescott zeke elliott and um, all of our starters will be playing and i can't wait to to go um trey lance Trey Lance had five interceptions yesterday. Five interceptions. Five interceptions. RG3 was basically saying, you know, what you're looking at is a guy who's got a lot of rust and hasn't had an opportunity and is still learning the ropes and this, that, and the other, and so on, and, and things. Uh, Jerry Jones basically said you know i like what i got with trey lance and stuff and i'll get into what jerry jones said in a minute but um people think that i'm like happy that trey lance has kind of bombed i'm not happy about it not happy about it at all i would love for trey lance that if dak prescott goes down that i'd have confidence in him coming in to save the day I'd be happy if he was even better than Dak Prescott and he could be the quarterback that could lead us to a Super Bowl. I'd be happy if he had a great trade value and they could trade him and pick up a second round pick or a player that could help us this year. I'd be happy for those things. I'm not happy about Trey Lance the way he looked. And for those out there that are going to make excuses, okay, mind you, and I, I love the jokes from people. Well, he learned how to throw the interceptions from Dak Prescott. Dak had one season after he broke his thumb where he had 15 interceptions. The same, mind you, that uh, Jalen Hurts had last year. So those who live in glass houses shouldn't cast the first stone. Nine interceptions is what he had all last season. Um, a little more than double what Trey Lance had in one game. So I've got that perspective. And to put this into a historical context... In the last 30 years, the last 30 years, which is somewhere around 1,888 preseason games, there's been only two quarterbacks to throw five interceptions. Only two ever. So he's in rare air, to so to, so to speak. Now we got our cut downs that are coming down, so we got to start talking about that. But I want to deal with Jerry Jones at the moment and C.D. Lamb and where we sit, because you know Jerry Jones, asked by John Machada, when asked if he had any regrets about trading a fourth round pick for Trey Lance. For a fourth round pick? Are you kidding me? Although we did get Dak. Uh, with our second fourth round pick in 2016. But we've had some that didn't play in the fourth round too. So I'm kind of looking at this and saying, are you throwing shade at Dak? Or are you trying to say Trey Lance is as good as Dak, which is throwing shade at Dak? I, either way, it just, the more you hear from Jerry Jones, the worse it sounds. So, John Machada, shout out to John, asking the tough questions here. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones made it clear that the playoff loss to Green Bay is still fresh on his mind. 
Several Dallas coaches and players are in the final year of their contracts. And does Jones think people perform at their best when their backs are against the wall? Absolutely, I do. I really do. There's no question in my mind uh, that pressure competing will bring out the best in this game from coaches and players. But this game has to have some extras over the guys that you're in front of. So we've been hearing C.D. Lamb's contract is close. C.D. Lamb, pick up the phone, give me a call, you know, so on and things. If you pay C.D. after he hasn't been here all off season and things, then you're not holding anything over his head. So does this say that all of the negotiations have actually been bullshit and we're here and you know that he's going to have to show up for week one? Is that the plan because you haven't gotten Mike. You didn't, you haven't signed anybody. You, you have not, you have not. And so I don't know what the hell and Sam Hills is going on. I will say, <laughs> here's what I'm going to actually say is when I look at Mike McCarthy, Mike McCarthy doesn't look like he's got any more urgency to win or any more pressure on him. He looks relaxed and ready to go, smile on his face every day. When I look at Dak Prescott, he doesn't look like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? I've got to perform. i got to get up. He doesn't seem to look like he's any pressure more than what he puts on himself. He looks awful happy. CeeDee Lamb, CeeDee Lamb, well, we see him still there working out. And I'll be honest, it doesn't seem to face, doesn't look like it's phasing him some. He wants to get paid. I Believe me, I guarantee he wants to get paid. I, and looking at Micah Parsons, I'm not sure Micah Parsons, Micah Parsons looks like he's matured more, but I don't know he looks like that he has a fear of not getting paid and that, you know, now all of a sudden he's going to perform better because Jerry Jones is, you know, mad. The only person that looks like they're under pressure and just looks angry is Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones looks like an angry, bitter person right now. Maybe, I I don't know if it's just the the frustration of, of wanting to win and not being able to, but you're not helping your cause. You're not making it better. You think that going ahead and saying that everybody is, is is on the the last year of the day. I, I tell you what, I say Brian Schottenheimer won't have a problem becoming an offensive coordinator working with Dak. I don't think Mike McCarthy, it might be the best thing in the world that he doesn't resign with the Cowboys because there's going to be quite a few teams that are going to look and say, well, damn, he thrived with Jerry Jones undermining him, losing instead of bringing in number one wide receivers and stuff. He got rid of them. He transitioned the offensive line. He made it without great running attacks. He got Dak Prescott as an MVP twice finalist. So I'm not sure that this is actually working, Jerry. This whole, let's make everybody uncomfortable. The only one who looks uncomfortable is you. So I've got to get ready to get out of here, but let's listen to the no deal, no problem latest on CD Lamb. Yeah, Brandon Ayuk and 49ers continuing to talk about a contract extension, but a lot of possibilities still on the table. If he doesn't get what he wants from the Niners, they have a, tr- a trade or the, the parameters of a trade in place with Pittsburgh. There are other teams still kind of sniffing around in case this goes south with the 49ers. I, I, I'm not going to say we expect a resolution soon because I said that two weeks ago and it hasn't happened yet, but just know he could still be in San Francisco or he could be with, with any number of teams if he decides he wants to be traded. Uh, wide receiver Jamar Chase of the Bengals is not going to get traded, but he is uh, looking for a new contract. Has two years left on his deal. He and the Bengals have been in contact about a new contract throughout this offseason and through training camp as he has sat there and not practiced uh, while the rest of the team has. 
I think Jamar Chase waits for C.D. Lamb and maybe Ayuk's deal to come in and then reassesses where the market is, whether he wants to do a deal now or next offseason. And speaking of C.D. Lamb, this is one we've been tracking throughout training camp. Uh, still no deal there. He has one year left on his deal. Didn't go to Oxnard with the team for training camp. Cowboys are now back in Texas. Uh, and I think once the preseason games are over, there's a long stretch of days between that and the start of the regular season. This is a deal that feels like it's been close for a while. I think it gets hammered out in plenty of time for week one. Yeah, speaking of C.D. Lamb, he's what the Dallas Cowboys need to get over that playoff hump. 12-5 and five over the last three years. And speaking of receivers, let's bring our guy Hawk back in. Now, we're not going to run it, but I can tell you that Lewis Riddick used the term sabotage with what Jerry Jones and the Cowboys are doing by not signing C.D. Lamb and getting this deal done. Hawk, do you agree? I, I do agree. I do agree because he is so important to this team, which we all understand. But specifically how they run this quote-unquote Texas Coast offense, the entire thing runs through C.D. Lamb. In business, they call it a key man risk, that a company is only as valuable as the guy who makes the thing go. C.D. Lamb is at peace for this offense in the West Coast because it's dink and dunk, and you pick your shots. And C.D. Lamb's versatility, he actually has multiple roles because he's also the deep threat, he's the short threat, he plays the slot, he plays the outside. Ferguson, Cooks, Dak, Ezekiel Elliott, all of their pr production is based on CeeDee Lamb being a threat in that offense. And if he is not there, they won't be able to, to, to continue what they've done from, from a season ago. Check yeah, out these Bart, numbers. It, Bart, it, it seems like the Cowboys are CD or nothing. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think we all know that this deal is going to eventually get done. Nobody foresees him not being there for week one. You know, sometimes deadlines uh, spurn action. Uh, but listen, I'm happy that, you know, Jerry Jones has made it uncomfortable around there. It's been a country club. Guys get rewarded. Guys get paid for no reason. You know, you think about Zeke, and, and then they don't really have the results. Like right now, I think he's going to get his deal, but I can applaud what Jerry Jones has done. I don't think this team is as void of talent as everybody tries to make them out to be. I think the Dallas Cowboys still are in position to maybe win this division. Yeah, but is this the guy to make the example out of? No, I, 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 no, 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 no. I don't, I don't think this is about the example. I think this is about the details. Right. right. This is, yeah, I think they really kind of know the number. I think it's about yes. structure. It's about being able to yes. have guaranteed money. It's all the little things. This is where Jerry's trying to negotiate, trying to make sure that he has more flexibility, that it's not a deal right. that benefits the player like Dak Prescott, where he finds himself you know, at the mercy of the player later in his contract. Because CD is a, not a one-contract guy. Right. He's a two-contract guy. So you want to make sure you structure this in the right way, that you have some type of flexibility. And we know from their history, the Cowboys want to make this a longer contract, help spread out that signing bonus hit. Uh, and, and the player oftentimes wants the shorter contract because he wants to hit free agency again, again while he's still young. So I think a lot of that is going back and forth. Once the Justin Jefferson deal got done, I do think that the numbers, the money numbers were pretty well set. But the Cowboys are looking at trying to do a deal with Dak Prescott, possibly before the start of the season. Right. They're looking at trying to do a deal with Micah Parsons next offseason. Uh, so they have to fit these all together. This is what they've been telling all three of these guys all along. We have to structure these deals so they fit together. Uh, and so far, they haven't been able to do it. I think they want to get a, a sense of what the Dak deal is going to look like right, before right. they sign off on a CD deal. Yeah, and Hawk, we were talking about it earlier with a receiver. You guys aren't structured mm -hmm. to just go from independently working out to week one NFL speed mm -hmm. in a game. That has to be a concern if this deal gets done within the next week, getting ready for that season opener in Cleveland. Absolutely. There's no way to get ready to play receiver football. in the National Football League except by playing wide receiver in the National Football League. It doesn't matter what mm -hmm. kind of drills who you're working out with, how good a shape you think you are. There's a level of intensity that you just can't duplicate by yourself. It's like when you're injured or someone's coming back from injury. You can do all the cone drills and change the direction that you know is coming you want, but in a game, it's completely different. And here's the analogy I use. We can all say, hey, if I told you to run as fast as you possibly could, you would think that that was fast. And then if I put a bobcat in the room, you would hit a whole new level. That's what a CD Lamb is not able to prepare for. I mean, welcome to the new NFL. This is where we are. Right? Yeah. Guys are going to try and go back to the market, get more money when they feel like they have the, the, the leverage. I want to know where Harry just be a curmudgeon. That's not, uh, that's time to play, Harry. believe it or not. All right. Um, so, I'm wondering if... The C.D. Lamb whole contract situation has been a charade where Jerry Jones just never planned on actually giving him a new contract to, to start the season. So we'll stay tuned. We'll keep up with this thing. But, wow, Jerry Jones. Jeez. Whew. I'm Mark Holmes, 
and I appreciate you guys. Peace out.